But at the end of the day, if you get home and you've got nothing left to give, you have given too much other places. Thank you for joining us for the Blended Kingdom Families podcast. This podcast is for blended families, the people who love them, and anyone who just wants to improve their marriage and family relationships. BKF exists to break the cycle of divorce, equip marriages, and unite blended families with the truth of God's word. It is our hope that today you will receive biblical guidance and practical resources that will bring unity and peace to create your thriving, healthy home. Let's jump in. Hey guys, welcome to the BKF Podcast, back with you for our final series on marriage. Uh, We're excited that you're here with us today. Uh, If you haven't already, please take an opportunity, like, share, uh, subscribe. What else can they do? They can comment. Yes. They can do all kinds of fun stuff. You can leave us a review if you want to. Uh, If you happen to be listening on Audible, please uh, take an opportunity to go to our YouTube channel. You can watch the full video format of this podcast. Uh, Today, we're going to be kind of concluding our series on uh, the priorities of marriage, Mm -hmm. and we're going to be talking about the kiddos, the children. Yes. Um, We got a bunch Mm -hmm. um, that really, really, really demand a lot of our time. Uh, So it's really, uh, we want to be in practice of what we're we're preaching here. Yes. uh, Yes. We've talked about, you know, having a relationship with Christ being our number one priority. We've talked about setting the standard for your spouse being your number two priority above your children. And then we're going to talk about you know, why the children, let's talk about why the children are in the place that they are, Mm -hmm. because I know blended families, it's understandable Mm -hmm. and it is sometimes expected, but blended families have a really hard time prioritizing their new spouse above their children. Right. So Vanessa, I I know in our situation, you brought Michael into our marriage. Mm -hmm. This is probably very real for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I want you to kind of just walk me through your process of why that was important that we created a safe spot for him Mm -hmm. in our marriage. Yeah, you know, and we've said this before, but, you know, if divorce is what hurt your children, a healthy marriage is what can help heal them. Yeah. And, um, and I think I even saw this modeled with my mom and stepfather because I come from a blended family as well, you guys. And I remember I didn't like it. I had had my mom all to myself for, you know, mm. a decade or more. And um, and then comes my stepdad and my stepsister. And it's like all of a sudden, you know, my dad takes priority over me. And it was a lot to get used to. And, mm. and I think with Michael as well, um, you know, I, I think for us, we were fortunate because that process was, was a lot easier than I Mm -hmm. think I expected it to be, um, because we really included him in a lot, but we also were very careful to make that time and Mm -hmm. make sure that our marriage was a priority and still is. I remember, I don't know if you remember this story. It was probably, Michael was, you know, he was just getting into his games and, and, uh, he made the comment we were riding in the car and he's like, I think that I need my own time and then you guys need your own time. Uh, and what he was lobbying for was quiet time to play games. But I thought it was really interesting that he recognized, and we talked about this early on, mm-hmm. you know, we, 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 we made phrases, we, we made plans that basically and told him, hey, we're going out on a date. Can I go? No, you can't. Yep. Um, and so it was funny to me that he kind of picked up on, I'm going to take my time and you can have your adult time. Right. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Creating that safe, safe place for children mm-hmm. is modeling the right marriage for yes. them. Yes. Um, and it's, it's the vital part of, we talk about breaking generational curses. Mm -hmm. That is the, the part where they start to learn about healthy marriage. Yeah. They don't know about healthy marriage as Mm -hmm. of right now. Mm -hmm. This is the part where they can. So, um, making sure that, you know, they see, um, see you taking time for your spouse, see you making your spouse a priority, um, and, and making sure that you're communicating to that to them. And then also letting them see, you know, uh, some healthy conflict yeah. as well. Yeah. I was, I'm glad that you said that Scott, yeah. cause I was about to jump into that. Yeah. I think it's so good to see, you know, what, what they can see, what forgiveness is. They mm. can see what, um, extending the olive branch looks like yeah. in some situations. Um, so yeah, I agree. I think that's so important. Yeah. And <sighs> The other thing I want to point out here, it, it, we talk about this as parents, like, okay, we're going to make sure our children are this and that. Mm-hmm. And there's so much that we can control. Yeah. But in blended families, we have two families. 
Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that they may not get the modeling of good marriage Mm -hmm. at another place. Right. And that could kind of bleed over into your own home. I, nowhere in this series of podcasts did I say any of this stuff is easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I will go the other direction and say it takes work. It takes It's hard work to do this. No more is that apparent when you are trying your best to sell, set healthy expectations for marriage and healthy priorities of where your children should be in priority lang- you know, the language of that is to when they come home and they're not in that priority. Maybe at their other house, they are the priority. Maybe their other spouse, your ex-spouse is not even remarried, so yeah. they don't understand that. So you're going to have conflict when the children, or you can have conflict when the children transition back and forth between homes mm-hmm. and explaining that process. Yeah. And, you know, as much normalcy, you know, and a sense of normalcy, I, I should say, um, and sameness so that it's not as abrupt and jarring yeah. for them. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, w- and we've talked about this before is, you know, we reached out to, uh, you know, my ex-spouse and his wife. And it was like, what can we, what can we do to make that process for sure. Michael better? You know, um, and everyone's situation is different, but you know, that was important to us. And, and again, it, it, I think it, it, at the end of the day, it helps the child. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I'm just kind of, kind of run back through my head and go, okay, you know, we're talking about the, the priority of where the children fit. And we to understand that that's really beyond, um, you know, our relationship with Christ is beyond our relationship with our spouse. And we know that the amount of time that we spend uh, needs to be in relation to the priority of what we're putting out there. So yeah. uh, not that you shouldn't spend time with your children. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we're going to talk about that the last part of this podcast. We're going to talk about how we prioritize family time yeah. and how crazy important that can be. Yes. But our children also need to see us devoting time. Mm-hmm. Um, and children, by their nature, are not exactly giving people, Mm -hmm. you know, little people. No, children are very, what, you know, you would call egocentric. It's, this is my world and this is what's going on. And it, and it's a very, uh, me centered atmosphere. And, and, and they don't understand that, Mm. you know, they don't have the emotional intelligence yet. Um, but yes, by nature, that is, that is what, what happens. And and we see it all the time. Our, Mm -hmm. our little one, our little ones are five, six, and seven. And they're, you know, we always go into that. I'm like, we're taking, I'm taking mommy out on a date. And they're like, I want to go. And I'm like, I don't want you to go. <laughs> um, and, you know, I try to be nice about it, but, you know, we've seen meltdowns, but, mm-hmm. but over time they start getting expectations. Yeah. Uh, we talk a lot about this um, in terms of the marriage bed. Yes. Uh, we could have talked about that during the marriage segment, but a lot of families run into this problem of their children that are in, that sleep with them in bed, and they mm-hmm. don't see a problem with that. Um, and that's not where children belong, mm-hmm. because the marriage bed is for the husband and the wife. Right. Um, two things should happen there, intimacy and sleep, mm-hmm. right? Right. So um, having that, having your children not want to, you know, be a part of, you know, sleeping with you every every evening um, yeah. doesn't set the priority of where they should be. Mm-hmm. No, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, one of the things that you said a minute ago, Scott, was talking about, you know, how do we prioritize our children and how do we prioritize time with them and our family time together? And we talk about this in the book, you guys, because that time is so sacred. I mean, our first ministry, you know, next next to having a relationship with Christ and to one another, like the greatest ministry that you can have is your parent hood ministry. Sure. It's a, your fatherhood ministry, your motherhood ministry. Um, it is so important that we are to train up our children, like scripture tells us, and the way that they should go. And um, I just want to read from scripture here in Ephesians uh, 5, 15 through 16, it says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but wise, making the best use of time. Mm. And I want to emphasize time there because um, in the original Greek text, it says exagorazo. I don't know if I said that right, but it means to redeem or to purchase. And you guys, your time with your family and with your children, that's something that um, it's precious and valuable. Mm-hmm. And we don't get that time back. You know, our son is about to be 16 um, this month and he has two more years in the house and then he's going off to college, you know? And so our time with our children, we we value that, you know, um, mm-hmm. for Scott and I, our time in the evening, we don't schedule a lot of e- evening activities outside of family things or like, you know, stuff that the boys are doing mm-hmm. that we can enjoy together because that time is valuable for us. Our weekend time, it's sacred and valuable to us. And so one of the things that we want to talk about is, 
you know, um, how we can be intentional in that time together. And a lot of times it's saying no to things. So let's I, go into that, Scott. I, I will tell you, uh, your, your gut reaction on anybody who invites you to do something at night should be no. I, I, I don't know how better to say that. If you have a family and people are like, let's go to dinner, or, you know, let's go do this. And it happens to be like a Tuesday night. No. Um, well, I, I think you can you can still do things, yeah. but like when it becomes a well, what re- I mean what I mean is the the gut reaction meaning right. it, it has to be through careful consideration yeah. for you to be like okay, you know if somebody asks me to do something or if there's a meeting or a dinner or whatever that may be right. on uh, a night of the week or even usually even on the weekends yeah I think there really has to be a lot of consideration before you be like oh yeah I'll do that mm-hmm. that's why I say the gut reaction should be no. Mm-hmm. Uh, it needs to be through a c- careful consideration of how am I budgeting my time? Yeah. Is this a good? Is this the best use of my time? Because the time is how you show the priority. Yeah. And if I've used up eighty percent, you know, because we know we have to work, mm-hmm. we know we have you know responsibilities that we have to do, but so I only have so much time left, mm-hmm. and this will take up a lot. Yeah. If you let it. So how am I budgeting that? So, and I know that early on in our marriage, we talked a lot about and, and and really examined, like, we really need to be protective of our time. Well, and that's why I love the scripture, because it's, it's we're called to make the best use of our time by protecting, by protecting and honoring it and treasuring it. And so I would say in practicality, you guys, you know, look at your, look at your schedule, you know, break it up into quarters maybe and say, Hey, you know what, over the course of these next three months, you know, let's only allow a lot, you know, maybe it's, it's one, one dinner out with another couple or with friends or whatever once a month or something like that. You know, I know we're really good about our schedule. You know, we're like, okay, we're only going to travel X, Y, and Z amount of times. We're only going to allow for a birthday dinner during the week, X, Y, and Z amount of times. Um, because again, we want to protect that time together. You know, you know, I know we've been in seasons before, um, in years past when we had like three, we would have three different events during the week. And some of it would even be, you know, church related stuff. And we yeah. finally got burnout. You know, it was like, we're, it's, it's cutting into our family time. It's cutting mm-hmm. into our spouse time with one another. Mm-hmm. And you guys, it, it, there was causing conflict and disunity. And so we had to, we had to stop. We had to reevaluate and ask the Lord, what do we need to lay down and only do the things that he was saying, yes, you can do this. And I would say, I know that might sound silly, but ask God, like if opportunities for things come up during the week, pray and ask God, Hey God, do do we need to be doing this? Yeah. And then talk to your spouse about it. You know, I know that, you know, a lot of times, you know, that, that may be the second clarification of like, Hey, should I do this? And it's kind of one of those things like you, maybe you get invited to something and we're talking about children here. So I'm going to round this back to them because of you know, we're talking to the adult side of the adult side of you and how we can make that, how we can make the quality time with our children the best possible so that they can understand their role in the priority level. Yeah. Uh, but as you do get, you know, opportunities to do things, just talk to your spouse and say, hey, should we do this? So before you say yes, um, you know, have that quality check process where you can go, should I be doing this and should I not be doing this? Because when you say no to something, you're actually saying yes to something else. Mm-hmm. So if you say no to not commitment of time here, you're saying, yes, I'm going to commit my time here. That's good. Um, and children, they're like they're like little gas tanks. You got to fill them up with time. Mm-hmm. You really do. If you don't, you're going to start reaping the harvest of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially if they're, you know, little ones, a little different. They just want, they just want to have fun. Yeah. Uh, for for me, they just want to like tackle me, and mm-hmm. they're wrestling me now. Um, but for you know, Michael being 15, I mean, man, we really gotta, we gotta pour into him. Mm-hmm. Gotta make time to be like, hey, let's go do something. Let's spend a little bit of time together because yeah. we're truly trying to teach them those life, those life lessons. Yeah. And I think that changes with seasons, you know, as Michael has gotten older mm-hmm. and his, you know, his activities have changed and his personality has changed. You know, we've had to change how we are intentional with our time with him and the things we do and mm. the way that we speak to him and, um, and the conversations that we have. And so, 
you know, how we spend uh, our time with our little guys is it's a lot different than how we spend our time with Michael. Um, And yes, we do things together as a family, but we also take a lot of one-on-one time with him. And so, and that's important because he's a 15, about to be 16 years old. Yeah. Um, And so I will say too, guys, you know, as your children and as you go through different seasons in your blended family and in your marriage, you know, how you spend that time with your children and the intentionality um, is going to change and shift. So I would be, um, you know, um, make sure, you know, that you're leaning in and paying attention to that. Yeah. And and we say all this to kind of round this out. And we talk about strategies for why it's important to spend time with your children. We talk about strategies to get more time with your children Mm -hmm. by doing other things that you may not want to do and saying no. But the reason we say all this is because children, children are a gift from God and they definitely deserve our time. They deserve our love. They deserve everything we can pour into them. They also deserve the example of a healthy marriage. Mm -hmm. They also deserve the example of a healthy relationship with Christ. Yes. These are things that we should give them like we give them food, like we give them water. Yeah. We should give them these things so they can see these things so that they can go out and do these things. Mm -hmm. Um, And we can't do that if we don't have time to give them. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. If at the end of the day you have nothing left, and, and we have been victim of this, we have said this, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, if you get home and you've got nothing left to give, you have given too much other places. Oh, that's good. So if that means I can't be the dad that I want to be, I can't be the mom I want to be, mm-hmm. then you are, can't be what you're trying to be. Yeah, and you know, thinking of Scripture when it says to train up a child— Training takes time. It takes intentionality. It takes planning. It takes strategy. You know, if you're training for a marathon, I mean, that is an intense process. It's down to what are you eating? How many carbs or, you know, protein, Mm -hmm. things like that, that you're putting into your body. You know, it's, there's a running schedule. There's all these different things. Mm -hmm. And so you guys, we can relate all of this back to time with our children, our marriage, our relationship with the Lord, and how this is ultimately going to shape um, them in their, um, in who they are. And so it's just important, like, you know, priorities for your marriage. I mean, this is such an important topic and you hear us talk about it a lot, but you guys, we can't stress this enough that how much of an impact this will have on your children and their children and the future, your legacy. It's so important. Yeah. And before we go, I I, want to, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of touch something really briefly here as we've talked about the priorities and we've talked about children as being that third priority. I also want you to understand that the rest of your relationships fall under that. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means your parents, your brothers, your brothers and sisters, Mm -hmm. your friends, Mm -hmm. your coworkers, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just adding up the time here yeah. that you're going to have to spend. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of those relationships come after these. Mm-hmm. And you would think you have enough time, but you only have, I think, like 34,800 seconds in a day or something crazy like that. You only have so many seconds, you can only give so much. And understand that when those priorities become higher in the list, you're going to throw the balance of, of your relationship with Christ. You're going to throw the balance of your marriage. Uh, and I know that they're important. I don't want to understress their importance, but right. I, I do want to stress their importance at where they belong mm-hmm. in the process. Yeah. Uh, and I know it for us as we've gotten older, mm-hmm. you know, my, both my parents are with Jesus, mm-hmm. and I'm happy that they're with Jesus. I'm sad that they're gone, but I'm happy they're with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've had to deal with you know aging parents and things like that. They, 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 we know it at our age that become important. Mm-hmm. But we need to make sure that we're conscious of the concept that, hey, they, these can't become more important than these other relationships. Right. I can't let my coworker relationships overshadow my marriage. Mm-hmm. I can't let my brother and sister overshadow my time with my kids. Right. And again, we'll point to technology, great at connecting people, horrible at wasting time. Mm-hmm. Um, and how that can play into... Um, overshadowing those relationships. Yep. So, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this three-part series, four-part series on marriage. Uh, We're excited to release our book, Blended and Redeemed, in September. Um, If if you want to get more 
more stuff, more content on this. Uh, we're going to be releasing new podcasts every single week, going over different series. We're also, um, depending upon when you see this, you can go back. We're going to be doing some speaking with EXO Marriage coming up at EXO Conferences. You can go and check those out. We'll be attending those and speaking. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed in all that you do today. Take care. Hey guys, so glad you were here with us today and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And you can find more resources from Blended Kingdom Families at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Join us again next time as we hang out with more amazing podcast guests. And remember, nothing will be impossible with God.